house of the Lord. I have missed you guys. Woo! <laughs> well, it's good to be missed, right? <laughs> well, God is good. I'm going to open the service this morning reading a little bit from Psalms uh, 107. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in, the, in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful work to the children of men. For he satisfied the heads of the Lord and filled the hungry soul with good, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Because they rebelled against the words of the Lord and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Why don't you stand with me this morning as we praise the Lord for his good works and for his goodness toward men? Jesus, we worship you this morning. And God, we praise you for your wonderful works toward us, Jesus. We thank you for your compassion and for your love. We worship you this morning, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather in your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship and magnify you. Magnify you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Worship him this morning as we sing wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me.
Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are, Jesus. We worship and magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. How many of you have found him to be your counselor? Yes, God is good in both meanings of that word. You know, when you get issues and you need somebody to talk through them with, <laughs> you know, get your mind in a, in a, in a right way. And uh, he counsels us. He gives us good advice. And he also works on our behalf. You know, you ever been misunderstood? Ever been wrongly accused? You know, and you needed somebody to defend you, if you will? And God was there to do so? He is good. And he give you peace uh, in the midst of it. God is good. Worship him if he's saying, he's all I need.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, for being all sufficient, Jesus, for being everything that we need, Jesus. We thank you for being our healer and our redeemer, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope you know that when you sign up with Jesus, so to speak, I hope you don't think that all is going to be cushy. No. There's, uh, there's this flesh we have to battle with till the day we leave this earth. There's that enemy of our soul that's always coming at us, if you will. And that, there are many things that happen in life. And uh, something God, some things God has to take you through to get you, get, to get you where he wants you to be. Yeah, he's got to work out the kinks. It's not always comfortable. Anybody ever been through the process? It's a continuous one. But when you look back at it, you know, when you're on the other side of that trial, when you're on the other side of that struggle, you look back at it and you say, wow, look what the Lord has done. Yeah, look what the Lord has done. And, um, or, or some might put it this way, it is well with my soul. Thank you, God, for doing what you had to do. And uh, God is good. Worship members be saying, it is well with my soul.
Kiakaya Moko Yoshi, Kiakaya Moko Yoshi. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sideya Moko Yoshi. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sideya Moko Yoshi. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship as we sing. Thank God for the blood.
blood, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship and exalt you this morning. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I am thankful for his blood. You know, God is so outside of the box, the way he does things. I was saying to somebody, I don't know, yesterday, that if you have to understand God to serve God, you're going to be in trouble. You can't figure God out. You can't figure him out, you know. But it, it's, um, it's simple to take him at his word. Just take him at his word. Know that he is God and that you are not. And that you are, are the created and he's the creator. You can't outthink God. You can't figure him out. He's sovereign. He knows everything. And uh, I'm glad that I'm in the hands of a very capable God and that he can take care uh, of my needs and he most certainly can take care of yours. And God's not overwhelmed by all of our needs. He's not. How he can take care of the billions of people on this earth uh, is mind-boggling to me, but he can. In fact, it's, it's his desire that every single person you know, I've, I've, somebody posed an argument to me about how, you know, Christianity can't possibly be the only way, you know, serving God. You know, what about the people, you know, in some remote country or some, you know, remote village somewhere in no man's land who's never heard of Jesus Christ or, you know, the, the, all the different faiths? Like, it, could it be possible? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible that God has one way. In fact, it's fact that there's one way. And uh, it's our job to be a part of taking that way to this world. It is. That's what those missionaries on that back wall back there, each one of those plaques represents a missionary that somewhere in this world, even in those remote places, taking the gospel to those people so that they can know the way. God is good. Uh, as we, man, we got some needs this morning. Uh, Sister Julie's having some issues with her sugar, and she's home now. She was spent, what, 11 hours laying or something crazy in the ER? And the ERs are the pits. <laughs> but anyway, she's home. And it's a matter of getting that regulated. So let's just pray that, um, that um, she's able to get her sugar regulated. Sister Bev had some surgery. We need to pray for her recovery. She's home recovering. Everything is well. But let's pray for her full recovery. Um, is Kitty still in the hospital? Yeah. Uh, Kitty's still in the hospital. Brother Owen, sister-in-law, recovering. Fluid on lungs, things like that. Let's pray for her recovery. And, and her salvation as well. Any other spoken needs that you know of, Steve, any? Right. Yes, Brother Vincent. Yes. Okay, the Christians in Iraq under persecution. Let's pray. Let's pray. Yeah, we'll. Oh, yeah. It's ugly. That's right. Let's pray. Sister Jan. Okay, we'll pray for her. Sister Diane. Okay, we'll do. Yes, yes. Any other needs? Brother Keith, you haven't spoken? Okay, we will pray. God is able. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Yes, amen. Yes. I can't hear you, sister. Lee Murphy. Okay. Yes. Mm hmm That's right. That's right. Absolutely. You do know the crime is not, not just concentrated in the cities, but even in the burbs. Crime is no respect to person, so we need to pray against it. Yes, Brother Alice. Okay. Okay. All right. Sister Bernice, yes. Okay, teens and the young people, absolutely. 
I tell you teens already that you're not the church of tomorrow, you're the church of today. Yeah, and God's not, God's not waiting on, uh, you, you don't need to wait until you get to a certain point before you can serve God. God says, serve me from your youth. Yeah, that's right. God is waiting on you guys to step up to the plate. Yeah, there's some other teens, there's some peers out here that need to be saved that God wants to use you to reach. And if you're being like them, how are you going to be effective for the kingdom? It doesn't make any sense. But um, God wants to use young folks. So let's pray for a light bulb moment, if you will. God will see it. Yes, it appears. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Now, you know that she didn't remember the lady's name or lifted the lady's name, but God knows who she's talking about. And if, all right. And if you just, you, if you just remember that person, that person you saw on the street corner, that person you met in the grocery store, you can lift that person up to God, and God knows exactly who you're talking about, and he's able to meet that need. All right. Uh, if you have a need, an unspoken, lift your hand this morning. Let's look around. Let's form that web of agreement. Let's take these, te- these needs to the Lord. Jesus, we worship you this morning, Jesus. And we thank you, God, for this opportunity to bring our needs to you, Jesus. God, we're lifting up our young people before you, God, asking you to intervene in their lives, oh God. And show them their place in your kingdom, Lord. And give them the courage to serve you, Father, even in the midst of great adversity, Jesus. And God... Uh, bind the, that murderous spirit, oh Jesus, in our communities, oh God, across this world, Jesus. God, we come against it in your name, and we ask that you would bring peace to our communities, oh God. Sense to our communities, oh God. Bring a spirit of brotherly love, Jesus. And God, minister, Lord, to all of those who are sick in their bodies, and those who are lonely and hurting, and those who have lost their loved ones, Jesus. Nobody can comfort like you can, Jesus. We ask that you would comfort them, Lord. And God, we pray for our families this morning, God, that you would protect and keep them, Father. But most importantly, bring them into your kingdom, God. Give them the revelation of your truth, O oh God, and graft them into your body. And God, do your mighty work in this church today, Father. Open our hearts and our minds to your word. Do what only you can do, Jesus. God, we look to you, Lord. We know that you have every single thing that we need, Jesus, and we believe you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the church says amen. Amen. All right. I'm looking around here. I think I see a few faces that I didn't recognize. And maybe because I wasn't here last week. But Victor's back. Victor, raise your hand over there. All right. You make sure. Victor's been to visit us a few times over there. And we have Delbert who goes by Dale. Dale's cool. I can tell. He said Dale when I said him this morning. Right? <laughs> Make sure you <laughs> make sure you make Dale feel welcome this morning. <laughs> and uh, get out of your pews and be warm and friendly.
All right. Head for your pews, head for your pews. There are some people in this church that are not in the least intimidated by me. I hope it's most of you, but there are some of you that just flat out are unimpressed. First of all, let me extend a warm welcome to all of our guests and to those of you that it seemed very spooky when I walked up and knew your name and you'd never seen me before. You need to understand that we work very hard at making sure that we know who was here. And so even though I was gone last week, I knew you were here. And so I extend a welcome to all of you, both those of you that are first time visitors today and those of you that were also first time visitors last Sunday. We welcome you and let me personally say how honored we are to have you with us, worshiping with us. Thank you for being here. And to those of you that came last week, thank you for coming back. It may be out of morbid curiosity to see what the pastor does when he's here, as opposed to uh, my father-in-law, who I understand did a great job in handling everything, though I have heard that he was very tired after Sunday night. I do sense within my parents and within my in-laws that they are enjoying retirement they're not beating on my door saying, you're not using me enough. <laughs> we are privileged to have them here, and obviously whenever I do travel or I'm gone, they are more than able to hold down the fort and, in fact, push us forward. But um, it is good to be back with you. Let me mention a couple of things. First of all, so happy and pleased that last Sunday morning... I was trying to get my wife to clue me in. In the future, Reg, get prepped before you start tinkling the keys. But the Heilmans were baptized. Can we give them a round of appreciation? Amen. She texted me and I said, push your FaceTime button. She texted me four times back and said, I've only got one hand. I said, babe, the FaceTime takes one finger. What's the problem here? Anyway. I've already seen parts of it on the video. I'm going to go back and re watch the whole thing from start to finish. But we're so pleased um, that they were baptized in Jesus' name, the only saving name. There's no name greater than that name. Heaven and earth are in submission to the authority of that name. And that name is now applied to your life. Amen, amen. And we're praying with you that God will fill both of you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when that happens, you can't imagine that anything's better than what you experience there. Well, hold on. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it gets even better. Amen, church? Amen. So we're so excited and happy for them and uh, just wish I could have been here. But thank God for modern technology. I at least can get a little bit of it. And uh, whoever was running camera last Sunday, thank you for turning the camera and letting me see in particular. And I uh, appreciate that. And I'll be looking at that. Amen. 
We uh, have a couple of things that are upcoming, and I want to draw your attention to them. This Saturday, this Saturday is our annual church picnic. You don't want to miss it. It is a great time of fellowship, fun, food, all kinds of craziness. And uh, it is at Brandywine Springs Park. Um, if you go up, and I know Nick and Ben can help me. What's the road it's off of? 40, 41. All right. Uh, if you go up, if you're coming up Kirkwood Highway or coming out of Wilmington down Kirkwood Highway, you want to turn. If you're coming from Wilmington, you want to turn right. If you're coming from Newark, you want to turn left. Um, right at Price's Corner there and come down 41 about a mile and a half and it'll be on your right hand side great park there uh, we will start eating at noon but you that are cooking if you want to grill or do other things like that we have access to the park as early as 10 a.m. so you're welcome to arrive if you want to prepare the grills just fire them up start things going that's uh, perfectly acceptable we do have the main pavilion again this year and uh, so come have a great time. We will supply um, the plates, the cups, the silverware, all that kind of stuff. It's not silverware, it's plasticware. But anyway, we supply all of that, the eating utensils, and uh, you bring the food, all right? Uh, bring ice, bring drinks, bring basically food for your family, and we put it all together and just have a great time eating uh, together. Also, on that day, there is a no-bake, what kind of contest? dessert contest. I don't know how you can have a no-bake dessert contest, but get creative because there's a prize attached to it. What's the prize? All right, you get a 20-buck Amazon card, plus you get to go into the Hall of Fame of the winners. And so uh, that, that probably is more valuable than the $20 Amazon card, though I $20 Amazon card is pretty good. You can do a few things with that. So... Um, if you're interested in that, put it together. Do they need to sign up or just simply bring it? All right. So if you plan on entering that contest, if you would let Regina know, she's kind of the baking guru around here for some reason. And uh, so if you let her know, and we'll have a good time. We're just trying to vary it a little bit so that it's not the same every year. So this makes it a little tougher on you. So a no-bake dessert contest. All right. So uh, put yourself together on that. That's this Saturday. If you're a guest or visitor with us, come and join us. Uh, it's one thing to see us in church here. It's another thing to see us in a picnic environment. So come. And uh, if food is a problem or you just are one person, don't even worry about the food. Just come ahead and eat with us. And we're going to have a great time together. So we're looking forward to that. Brandywine Springs Park this Saturday, starting at noon. You can access the park at 10 a.m. All right, so put that on your schedules. Also, two things coming up as we enter into the fall. We're not quite there, but in about a month we will be. And that is our Community Friends and Family Day. We always launch the year, if you will, the beginning of the fall with that. It is September 7th, and uh, we extend ourselves to the community by inviting them and asking you to invite them to come. So invite your family, invite your friends, invite your community, your neighbors. And, uh, and then we provide lunch. Now, in order to do that, it means, uh, all of the guests close your ears right now, it means all the rest of you have to work. There's no way to do this if we don't work together. So you have one more Sunday to volunteer, and drafting starts Monday morning. So you have today to volunteer and Monday morning, probably it'll be Tuesday morning, but Tuesday morning, I will begin assigning. And you won't get to pick what spot. So one of you might end up with the mop, and you didn't want to end up with the mop. Or one of you might end up lugging tables, and you didn't want to end up lugging tables at 6 in the morning. No, it's not 6 in the morning. But So if you'll help us out today, if you're willing to sign up, do so. Otherwise, I will begin drafting all of you great people that pull this off every single year. And I know that this year will be nonetheless. So help us out with that. And uh, Sister Leela wanted to give you a chance to uh, kind of self-sign up. And uh, some of you have. Thank you. Those of you that haven't, this is your last Sunday to choose to do so. Otherwise, I will begin with my pen. Everybody smile at me. My pen will begin to draw upon the sheets.
All right, so Community Friends and Family Day, and then discipleship classes begin that week. All right, so we will, right now, because of Community Friends and Family Day sign-up sheet, I did not yet post them, but you should expect to see them very shortly. Uh, discipleship classes, just verbally, let me tell you that the first two levels, level one, if you're new with us, you want to join us for a new life, that will be held on Wednesday evening at 7.30, along with our adult Bible class, along with a growing life, Okay. So level one and level two will both be on Wednesday night. If you don't realize it, we have reprovisioned what was a Sunday school classroom is now going to be a reception room and also another classroom. So we will literally have three adult classes going on Wednesday night all at the same time. All right. And then we will start the new uh, level three class, A Maturing Life, on Tuesday. And there will be a day session at 11 and an evening session at 7.30. Now, those of you that have done this before, you've been used to us offering three so that we run everybody through in one fell swoop. Because of the schedule, as I've mentioned to you, as we felt our way into this discipleship process, um, we are restricting it to only two. So everybody relax and don't sign up 24. I can't fit 24 in either one of the classrooms, all right? So if you will, just sign up. First 12, sign up for either the 11 o'clock on Tuesday or the 7.30 and it will roll around the next semester. In other words, when we hit winter, we'll do it again. When we hit spring, we'll do it again. So everybody will get through, but there will be only two sessions, not three, in this fall term. All right? So look for those. Those are coming up. All right. I'm looking through my list to make sure we're good. One more thing to mention to the church. See, I go out of town. I got a ton of announcements, right? Um, one more thing which I ask you to help us out with is and this is particularly probably teenagers. Sorry to pick on you teenagers. But we need you to be careful not to, during the beginnings of service, when we're coming in, congregate around the greeter's desk. Because when guests and visitors come and they hit that desk, if there's a ton of us all bunched up around it, we miss people. We can't get their visitor's packet to them. We can't catch their names. We're not warm and inviting. So keep your kids in here, all right, not congregated. And that's kind of a proactive warning so that then when the greeters ask you to step away from the desk, you won't be offended at them. You'll just be offended at me. Because they're doing it because I tell them to, okay? Because we want to be ready that when Kim walks in for the first time, she gets a big warm welcome and gets a packet and gets devoted attention, not greeters catching up on the local news or whatever else is happening, okay? So be sure and help us out with that, if you would. Yes. Yes, the front entranceway, that whole front entranceway. Bring it into the vestibule itself, in by the bathrooms, or into the, into the sanctuary, okay? Um, leave that space free. My dad, when he built this church, built very practically. He wanted to get just under a certain square footage so we didn't have to put sprinkler systems in. Am I right? Huh? Yeah. So he didn't make the vestibule real large. Okay? So we have to take the space we've got and work with that space. So it's important that you keep moving through. But I also know it had to do with sprinkler systems. Don't tell me it didn't because I know it did. And sprinkler systems made the cost go up. I know. It would look nasty, wouldn't it? Pipes running all over the place. Yes, I agree let alone some ornery kid that busts it, and then we are all sitting here having a shower together. That'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? One big shower. Anyway, so help us out with that. I need Vincent to join me on the platform. Most of you know that we've just completed our Bible quizzing season. For those of you that are guests or visitors, our young people engage in a program called Bible quizzing where each year they memorize anywhere from a couple hundred to over 500 Bible verses verbatim. That means any verse out of order, within five seconds, they are able to start that verse and quote it word for word. And they compete within games and within tournaments, and we spend basically about 10 months of the year engaged in it. The month of August and the month of September are off, and then we start again. And a number of young people at various levels and various uh, parts of participation have been involved. And, uh, of course, my dad and Ben Cohen are both national officials involved with, 
with Bible quizzing as well. Ben is our new district coordinator as well. And so uh, we're, we're excited about that. And, um, but we have a lot of kids that are involved and we just completed junior nationals two weeks ago. And then this past week we completed senior nationals. Now I do understand that this is my son. I know that you all know that as well. But I need you to understand that this is also your son. This is a member of your church. This is a child of your church. And you need to understand how hard this young man has worked and how well he has achieved. As a team, we placed in the top third. We were tied for 17th within the tournament. We would like to do better on that, and we hopefully will do better on that as years progress. But this young man, due to his hard work and his endeavor, in all major categories, there's a whole point system that has been developed over the years in Bible quiz, and in all the major categories, Vincent is ranked as one of the top five quizzers in the nation. And within this tournament that we just finished, Vincent was number four on the all-tournament team, which meant that he was in the top 4% of the quizzers. There were only five above him as far as the scores in this tournament alone. Would you give Vincent a hand and a honor? Proud of you. I said, I'm proud of you. Keep working. Amen. I saw, I don't know who this is, but uh, my wife and I just saw it. There's a website that's dedicated pretty much to the statistics of quizzing. And it's called upcquiz.com. They stream the quizzing as well. And uh, down at the bottom of this year's stats for North American Bible Quiz Tournament, there's a comment. I don't know who the person is, but the comment simply says, fear the Beardsleys. <laughs> I think they're making a play off of something else from Oklahoma about fear the beard. You know, those of you that are sports nuts or that, but anyway, uh, the nation knows who Vincent and Caleb Beardsley are, and that means they represent you to the nation. And so we are very honored and privileged and proud of them and uh, so happy for them. If you're interested in, in Bible quizzing, we're getting ready to start back up again, and one of the things you'll see show up on the sign-up board is a list uh, for you to let us know that you're interested in Bible quizzing. It'll have one column for juniors, one column for seniors, and that's just simply to get an idea of who's interested. We'll then have an orientation meeting with you and, uh, and prepare you for the new year. Basically, think in terms that you would start earnestly memorizing in October. So orientation will be in September sometime, with then you starting memorizing in October, and with quiz practices starting in November. Okay? So just a little bit of a deep breath, and here we go again. Start a new year. Amen. Ushers, if you would come. Yes, please forgive the long announcements. Normally, we keep them much more truncated, but I had to do a little catch-up there. So please... Thank you for your indulgence in allowing us to do that. Sister Iris is smiling at me. I don't know if she's begging me to be good or begging me to say something about her hat or encourage the congregation that it's acceptable to put on your sunglasses so that you can see her bright pink. Which was it? I'm confused. Let's stand together. Why do we pray for the offering? You ever asked yourself that? Maybe you haven't. Maybe it's just simply been it's custom, it's culture, it's something you're used to. I'll tell you why I pray for the offering. I pray for the offering every single time because I am tasked with the stewardship. I'm the hands that your giving to God flow through. And I don't know if you've noticed it, but within religion and within churches, besides morality, 
the thing that is destroying churches right and left is the mishandling of money. If you're a guest and visitor with us, you don't know the degrees to which we go to make sure that we handle it appropriately, that we're accountable, that we are good stewards, that we do what you and God intend for this money to do. But I pray for this offering every single time, not because I'm praying, oh God, give us an offering so I can pay the bills. Because you all have been very good in your giving and we're able to pay our bills and I thank you for that. But I pray for this offering that God would give us wisdom that what he wants done in his kingdom will occur through your giving. Would you join me in that prayer this morning? Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that we can give. And God, I ask that you would give us the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom to be able to use the money that you have blessed us with through the people of your kingdom. And God, give us the wisdom to use it in the way that you intend it to be used for your kingdom, for your purpose, to carry out your will. And I pray it in Jesus' name. And would everybody say amen? Put a smile on your face and give.
can you lift your hands and your voices to him in that worship I worship you Jesus name of Jesus hallelujah 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 I praise your name Lord I praise your name Lord Jesus hallelujah 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 Jesus hallelujah Jesus Praise your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. As I turn your attention to the gospel of Luke chapter number 9, verses 10 through 17. Then I'll also be hopping over to John chapter 7. Let me remind those of you that have been involved this summer with Ministry Monday. You have three more sessions of that this starting this Monday and then as we move into the fall term uh, the ministry Monday will take a hiatus so three more sessions these next three Monday nights at 730 it's a beautiful presence of the Lord in this place and I'm thankful that he's here today amen I don't take for granted God showing up it's not hard to have him show up but there is a sincerity and an honesty that has to be present within the hearts of the people who gather together in his name. John chapter 7, excuse me, Luke chapter 9 first, Luke chapter 9 beginning with verse 10. When the apostles returned, they told Jesus everything they had done. Then he slipped quietly away with them toward the town of Bethsaida. But the crowds found out where he was going and they followed him. He welcomed them and taught them about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who were sick. Late in the afternoon, the twelve disciples came to him and said, Send the crowds away to the nearby villages and farms so they can find food and lodging for the night. There is nothing to eat here in this remote place. But Jesus said, You feed them. There's probably a whole sermon there for the church that I'll refrain from preaching this morning, but Jesus said, you feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Or are you expecting us to go and buy enough food for this whole crowd? For there were about 5,000 men there. And given the conventions and cultural norms of that time, that was simply a way of counting, which means that there were any number of other people, women and children. By my estimate, I believe a minimum this crowd was, was 20,000. A minimum. Could have been 25 to 30. A lot of people. Jesus replied, Tell them to sit down in groups of about 50 each. So the people all sat down. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread and the fish to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. I want to pause there for a moment. I know you're reading the rest, but stay with me for just a moment. They all ate as much as they wanted. Some of you are here today because you are hungry. You are looking for something. Spiritually speaking, you have been in a remote place. 
and you've been starving. How do I know this? Because the Spirit just led me to say it. You're looking for someone to feed you. You're looking for a church service to provide you with some nourishment. But I want you to pay attention to the second part of this verse. So Jesus takes five loaves and two fish. He continues to break it and send it out until everybody of this 20 to 30,000 people have eaten all they wanted. They're fed. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. This morning, I want to speak to those people that find yourself in a remote place and tell you that God has an offer for you today. And that offer is not simply to feed you. It is to provide for you in such a way that you are eating from the overflow. Eating from the overflow. That's how much God cares for you. He doesn't want to just take care of your hungry spiritual belly. But he wants to provide for you. So that when you have eaten as much as you can, there is overflow left over. The reason we are who we are, the reason we worship the way we worship, the reason we gather together in this place the way that we do, is we have all come to Jesus from remote places. We've all come to Jesus from a hungry spot. And we found him able to provide food for our soul, nourishment for our spirits. And today we share with you from the overflow. God did not just feed us. He has fed us enough that we have more than enough to share with you. But he's not interested in you just eating our leftovers. He's not interested in you just eating from that which flows over from us. God is interested in providing you with your own relationship and your own access and your own provision so that you are able to eat from the overflow. You have more than enough. You have more than you need. Can you imagine this moment for the disciples? Looking at, I've been in a Colosseum where there were about 18,000 people. So that's getting close to 20,000. Can I just simply tell you by experience, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Now imagine yourself standing in a field and these people are ranged out around you and Jesus has you standing there with five pieces of bread. I don't care how big you make these loaves. Let's not even quibble. Make them gargantuan. Make them the biggest loaves you've ever seen. Make each of the two fish a 30-pounder. It's still flat-out overwhelming to look at this crowd of 20 to 30,000 people. And Jesus says, if you'll give me those five loaves and two fish, I'll feed them. It doesn't look like much. It certainly doesn't look up to the task. And this morning, what I share with you will not look like much. Compared to how hungry you are, compared to the longing that you have in your heart, what I say to you will not be that splendid. It will not be that earth-shaking. What I share with you will not seem like it's up to the task. But I'm here this morning to tell you, God has seen you. God has heard you. God knows you're in a remote place. God knows that you're hungry, and you can eat from his overflow. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. You can eat from his overflow. Because God knows how to provide for you. But he just doesn't want to feed you today. He wants to provide for you. 
in a manner that never runs out. Jesus had an encounter one time with a woman at, at a well. She was a Samaritan woman. She was an ungodly Samaritan woman. She'd had multiple husbands and was with a man that was not her husband at the time. Probably we are right to understand that the reason she was coming, not in the cool of the morning the way that all the women did when they came out of the town together to gather water for the day, but instead was coming at a hot point in the day is because the women would not spend time with this woman. They feared her. They disrespected her. Jesus found himself sitting on that well, and in fact, when you read the text, you'll find that Jesus intentionally went to that well. He told his disciples, I must needs go through Samaria. And the gospel writer really tells us that the reason is, is because he wanted to have an appointment with that woman. Can I tell you something that this preacher, who's very tired after a long trip, has been sent here today. I must needs have stepped to this pulpit. This message is for you. God has seen you coming. You may not be a disreputable woman. You may not be sitting on a well. But just as surely as he saw that Samaritan woman coming and said, I've got to be sitting there and I've got to have the disciples gone because the disciples are going to recognize that she's ungodly and they're going to try to protect me. So I'm going to send them off. I'm going to get them out of the way and I'm going to be sitting here waiting for her when she shows up he's been waiting for you he's seen you coming he said to her he said would you give me to drink of course she got a little testy about it and said what are you doing talking to me you know you Jews don't like Samaritans but Jesus then makes a statement in the midst of that conversation. says, if you would drink of the water that I give you, you would never thirst again. Another way to put it is, is I can provide for you in a manner that never runs out. You draw from this well, you're going to carry water that will eventually run out, and you're going to have to make another trek out of Sychar, out to the well. But me, I know how to give you overflow. I know how to provide for you in a manner that you will never run dry. Where does this come from? How does this happen? I'm going to tell you how. John chapter 7, and beginning with verse 37 through verse 39, Jesus makes this statement. He says, on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. And then the gospel writer includes a little statement. He says, when he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Today I declare to you, Jesus has entered into his glory. Jesus has gone to Calvary. Jesus has laid himself down upon that cross of Calvary. Jesus died for our sins so that when we repent, when we admit we're sinners, when we say to him, I am sorry, when we say to him, we want to be changed, he has already paid the cost that gives us the efficacy and the ability to have those sins forgiven when we couple repentance with the waters of baptism in Jesus' name. For there's salvation in no other name. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Those waters of baptism are what take the sins of our repented heart and remove them from our lives. Jesus has entered into his glory. And today I'm telling you, the overflow is not in bread, it's not in fish, and it's not in literal water. The overflow is in the power of the Spirit of God. You see, God knows no limit. So when you receive the infilling of the Spirit, you have received sustenance for your soul, for your being that knows no limit. 
I know we Pentecostals try to figure out how to talk about the refreshing of the Holy Spirit. And we use terms like refilling. But the problem with that is it sounds an awful lot like the woman coming from Samaria's village and coming out and getting another jar of water. But the problem is, is we don't realize is that God provides for us and he provides with enough that we have overflow. Your Holy Ghost never runs dry. Your Holy Ghost never gets low. Your Holy Ghost never loses its efficacy. Your Holy Ghost never never gets a little low. It's not like you get E on the tank. No, you have overflow. And that which you have been seeking, that which you have been desiring, that which your heart has been reaching for, God has sent me today to tell you, you can eat from the overflow. You need his spirit. You need to ask God to fill you with his spirit. You say, that's it? Yeah, that's it. What I just described for you is called a new birth experience. It is what Nicodemus was described by Jesus to, that Jesus described to Nicodemus would happen in order to see and enter the kingdom. You must be born from above. Marvel not, Nicodemus, that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you have been born of the flesh. Yes, you have been born of a human means, but I have another birth for you. It doesn't require your mother's womb. It doesn't require some physical thing to happen but rather I have the ability for you to be born from above and to be born again of water and of the spirit when you repent of your sins when you are baptized in Jesus name and when you are filled with the spirit you experience the being born again of the water and the spirit that Nicodemus spoke of and that brings you new life that which is born Jesus said of the flesh is flesh but that which is born of the spirit is spirit God has come here today to not just feed your body. He's come here to feed your soul. You can eat of the overflow. That which you have desired, that which you have sought, that which you have yearned for is here today. I'm not telling you this is the only place, and I certainly do not have control of this. In fact, I have no control over repentance. I can ask you if you have repented, but I have to take your word for it because repentance is an act of the heart. Only God and you know whether you've repented. Whether you've taken ownership of your sin or responsibility probably is the better answer because Jesus took ownership of your sin at Calvary. So have you taken responsibility for your sin? Have you admitted I'm broken, I'm wrong? And have you asked God to change you? See, this is not a moment here today. I'm not here to guilt you into feeling bad that you've got to repent. In other words, hands in the cookie jar, I'm sorry, I got caught. No, this is a matter of recognizing, yes, I have broken God's laws. I have been disobedient to what is right. But God, I don't want to stay that way anymore. I don't want to keep living that way. I want to change. This isn't a moment. This is a pivot point. I don't control repentance. Don't know if you've done it. I'll ask you if you have. But you can lie to me. There's no way for me to know. I don't control your obedience in baptism. In fact, I only participate in what really happens to you. In fact, I would go so far as to say that my role is almost minimal. It's almost negligible. Because the New Testament gives us example that the power of the name being applied to your life actually occurs in you calling out that name. Whether I call it out for you or you call it out together with me, the bottom line is, is it's you calling upon the name of the Lord. That is what will save you. So I don't even have control over baptism. I can participate and I can facilitate. We have some water here. I have robes in the back. I have some towels to dry your hair off afterwards. Some of you won't need many towels. You don't have much hair. It's in your hands. And for sure, the Holy Spirit, I have no control over it. 
I have the Holy Spirit. I operate and walk in the Spirit. I listen and obey the commands of the Spirit, but I do not control the Spirit. The Spirit is God. And your repentant heart and your asking Him to fill you is all the pieces necessary for you to receive the Holy Spirit. So I don't have anything to do with this. I am simply the message bearer. I simply bring you the good news. And the good news is very simple. The hunger of your heart. The yearning of your soul. Can be filled when you repent of your sins. When you are baptized in the name of Jesus. For the forgiveness of those sins. And when you reach out to almighty God and say God I want you living in me. Now. That don't sound like much. It's like five loaves and two fish. What is that with my great need? What is that when there are so many? <laughs> it doesn't look like much, I agree. But in the hands of Jesus, five loaves and two fish not only fed them, but overflowed. They had leftovers. Today you're sitting in the midst of people that I know it doesn't look like much, but I'm telling you, if you will repent of your sins, if you will go down in the waters of baptism for the forgiveness of those sins, and if you will reach your hand out toward heaven, open your mouth and begin to cry out to him and say, God, I want your spirit. I want you. I promise you, that your hunger will be fed and you will enter into a new life where you're eating from the overflow. Not going meal to meal, moment to moment, but where you have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Where the fruit of the Spirit is overflowing in your life. So the question is this morning, Anybody hungry? I'm not talking about lunch. We're not serving you lunch today. Anybody hungry? Has anybody showed up here today and today's the day? Some of you have been eating from our leftovers. You've been enjoying the spirit that you feel in this place. You've been enjoying our worship. But today is today the day that you say, you know what, I'm tired of eating their leftovers. I want my own. Is today the day that you say, hey, I'm tired of just enjoying the presence of God that seems to show up when these people gather together. I want this presence of God to show up when I show up. I want access to this. I want my own basket full. I want my own overflow. I want my own provision. Jesus has sent you a very simple message this morning. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name for the forgiveness of those sins. Lift your hands into the air and ask him to fill you with his spirit. Say, how do I know I got it? Well, this really weird thing happens. God takes your tongue and your lips and he starts messing with them. Whatever language you are speaking to him in, you will begin to lose control of that language. You will think something's wrong. You'll try to force and enunciate. You might stop speaking. You'll feel your lips quiver or your chin quiver. You'll feel your tongue get thick. And you'll be like, man, something's gone wrong with me. Who shot me with something? The reason I'm telling you all of this right now is because when that happens, what you need to do is let go. You say, that's, that, that, that's pretty weird, preacher. Let me tell you about this church. I'm not trying to tell you anybody else, but we, we don't jump you. If you haven't already figured it out, we're not all over you. When you come to this altar to pray, I'm not going to be, you know, having my hand all up on your head and just going crazy on you. I'm not doing that. Because I'm crazy enough to believe that you can receive the Holy Ghost the same way they did in the Bible. 
There were people that prayed with me, but there wasn't no, there wasn't no jumping you. No, you need to know that when that spirit starts touching you that way, that it's God who showed up. When your tongue starts getting thick, it's God showing up. When your lips can't make those words sound correct, it's God showing up. And at that moment, you have a choice to make. Will I submit to that God and let come out of my mouth a language that I do not understand? Because you see, the first time God poured out his spirit upon flesh, they were gathered together in one room. They were waiting for this promise. And the scriptures say they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as God gave them the ability. So again, I'm only the messenger. I don't give the spirit. God and you are the ones that work that out. But I do know by experience that if you will come in honesty before him in repentance, if you'll cry out to him and ask him to fill you, even before you hit the waters of baptism, he will fill you with his spirit. And you'll eat from the overflow. Five loaves and two fish. What is that with so many? Preacher, it's pretty plain doctrine. Don't, don't I have to have some special oil? Don't I, don't I need to do some great feat? Don't I, don't I need to join a church first? Don't I, don't I, don't I need to be wearing a certain kind of clothes? Don't I need to? No, no, you don't. You need to repent of your sins. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of those sins. And then you need to lift your hands to God and let him take over your tongue and your lips as he enters into your heart and fills you with his spirit. That's all you need to eat from the overflow. Would you stand? This altar is open. Church, would you come? They're going to come and pray. Would you come with them? If you're a guest, if you're a visitor, would you join with us as we come to the altar, church? Be sensitive. Don't just go through the routine. I know we're here every Sunday, but it's birthing time. Guests, would you come? I'm not telling you you can't pray in your pew, but would you come with us? The altar's a great place to get away from distractions. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. God, I worship you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It doesn't matter your background, you can have it. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, Jesus wants to give it to you. Doesn't matter your gender, doesn't matter who's disrespected you in the past. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus wants to give it to you, wants to give you life everlasting. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can have it. It's free for you. It's available to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, be worshiping. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be tuned in right now. All across this place, God's moving already. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I worship you and I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. I know you can meet the needs of this people here. Yes, Jesus, we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are hungry people, Lord, that are here from a remote place. Feed them, Master. Feed them. Feed them, Jesus. Feed them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've done what you asked me to do. I brought them, Lord, the five loaves and the two fish, Lord Jesus. Now it is in their hands, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is now in their hands, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I worship you. Doesn't matter if you're a child or an adult. Doesn't matter your socioeconomic background or your education. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus didn't discriminate. Five loaves and two fish. Eating from the overflow. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I worship you, I praise you, I magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 church. Stay praying. Come on. Stay praising right now. There's at least two up here praying for the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah, 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 Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, I praise your name. I worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want more of his great love, so rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus, so I'll give him more of me. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of his great love, so rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus. So I'll give him more of me. I want more of Jesus. More and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of his great love, so rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus. So I'll give him more of me. I want more of Jesus. More and more and I've ever had before. I want more of his great love, so rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus, so I'll give him more of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory. Yes, glory, glory. Hara hara hoshita hara 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 hasiti kiri ora 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 hasiti kiriya. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Dad. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wherever you're sitting, you can receive him. If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, tap a neighbor and say, how do I do this? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name. Oh, yes, sing unto the King of Israel. I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. Oh, I sing glory, glory, glory to his name. Forever glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise your name, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, I sing glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got time to pray with me so my little girl can get the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Cassandra, let go of it. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, in your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, in your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, You know the song, sing with my wife.
Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God is great. Yes, God is great in my soul. Oh, God is great and greatly to be praised. My God is great in my soul. Oh, God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. Hallelujah. God is great in my soul. God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. Yes, Jesus, I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, adults, it's just as hard for you. It's just as hard for you to let your brain go. Your brain gets in your way. You feel him, but then you got to have control of it. You don't get the spirit by being in control. You get the spirit by letting go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You got to want it bad enough that you don't care what happens. Hallelujah. He's not going to embarrass you. It's not going to hurt you, but he's going to fill you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to take over your tongue and your lips. You got to worship him. You got to let him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, I praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And anybody can have it. Anybody can have it. Come on. He's here. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't focus on the tongues, but when it comes, it's going to feel funny. You got to give him control of your tongue and your lips. You focus on him. You worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But he will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, I worship you. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you have to go, I can just warn you. A little kid knows how to pray a long time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But if you want to hang around, she might get the Holy Ghost today. We'll see how bullheaded she is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Cassandra, let it go. Here he comes. He's going to touch you. Come on, speak it out. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you this morning. I praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. I worship you and I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I praise your name, Jesus. I worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, Prince of Peace. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wherever you're at, you can have it. I'm telling you. Just because some folks are left, you can have the Holy Ghost this morning. All you got to do is pray. Worship Him. Ask for it. How bad do you want it? I'm not trying to be rude, but how bad do you want it? Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus, hallelujah. 